Hey guys, welcome back to the Hardware Sense channel. I hope everybody's staying safe and everybody's okay. As promised before, we're gonna look into installing and upgrading the cooling solution on that HP Gaming Pavilion desktop. Uh, and what I chose for my upgrade is this one, the Sight Big Shuriken 3. Spoiler alert, excellent, excellent, excellent cooler. I grabbed this one from Amazon under $50, I think 46, 47. Uh, it's what the price is right now. I liked it so much, I actually bought two of them for two different computers. Uh, I'm gonna show you the other one uh, very soon on a separate video. But uh, a little background story. You guys probably saw my previous videos. The HP desktop, uh, Pavilion desktop, uh, is a very, very good computer. Uh, but we were looking for different ways to upgrade some of the components. We did the memory, we did the graphics card. Now it's time for the cooling for the CPU. Um, in uh, general, when you buy the computer like this, obviously they're not gonna put top-notch or higher level uh, cooling solutions. So the stock uh, fan and cooler on that computer, it's okay, but uh, we can definitely uh, squeeze uh, some better performance if we have a uh, lower temperatures. Uh, so long story short, the uh, performance of that one with 22 degrees Celsius um, in ambient we're getting close to 80 degrees uh, for a long period of time where we game uh, which definitely raises up the overall temperature inside the tiny box that 90 millimeter fan in the back uh, has to work extra hard to uh, dissipate that heat uh, which is not enough obviously we don't have an intake so that's an additional problem uh, so my idea was to grab one of those, install them, and see what kind of uh, performance increase we're gonna have and what kind of temperatures we're gonna uh, get. Now, long story short again, uh, first thing to notice is actually how hard it is to actually install it. In most uh, des desktops or most uh, motherboards you guys uh, are familiar with, if you buy them from the store, it's extremely easy to upgrade cooling solution or installing coolers, especially when they're outside of the box. You just uh, spend 10-15 minutes and you're good to go even without uh, knowing too much information about it. Now in this specific case, obviously because this is such a small uh, box, such, such a small uh, case, we gotta take everything out, uh, take the graphics card, take uh, uh, everything that is attached to the motherboard, uh, extract the whole motherboard out of the case and um, try to install the uh, fan and the uh, uh, heatsink. Now the biggest problem I faced, and this is going to be a recurring problem for pretty much every every pre-built HP computer, if you want to upgrade uh, the cooling solution, is HP are using a proprietary uh, backplate for their socket and for their attachment for their cooling solution. Uh, this is a huge problem because not everybody has a way to change and work around and fix that problem. Uh, in my particular case, and I advise you to as well if you want to upgrade your cooling solution, is if you have an old uh, broken motherboard, Intel, uh, anything from 1155, 1150, 1151, any kind of broken uh, Intel motherboard from that generation will work perfectly well. You can unscrew the back plate that actually holds the socket in place to the motherboard and use that because what HP are using is a combination between socket uh, backplate and retention backplate. So it's one big piece of metal that is not very convenient to upgrade. Um, the other thing is because it's uh, stuck to the motherboard with the adhesive, you gotta work your way around with some plastic or wooden tools, uh, prying slightly and gently. So be very careful. Don't use anything metal, don't use excessive force. Uh, you just uh, need to work around be more patient and probably less than 10 minutes you're going to be able to detach that uh, stock backplate now if you have already prepared your backplate from another motherboard uh, for the socket uh, just attach that to the socket it's very easy couple uh, bolts couple screws and that's it uh, and then after that we are good to go and use the backplate that it's provided by sight in the big sure can 3 uh, putting everything together uh, after this uh, manipulation is very very easy uh, applying some thermal grease as always I'm using my GD 900 uh, big syringe 30 grams that I uh, brought a while back very good solution I've been using it across many 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 motherboards uh, and video cards 
uh, installing back everything together nicely uh, routing the cable of the fan around the actual fan uh, because it has these uh, rubber isolators on the corners of the fan for vibration uh, uh, degrees it's it's very nice to tuck the cable around and kind of make it look nice and pretty uh, putting it back together I guess a little bit more patience just work away around try not to forget any of the screws uh, uh, speaking of screws there will be only one that it's right above the uh, fan on the top uh, uh, kind of a top side of the motherboard that you're not going to be able to reach out and screw uh, down to the actual uh, standoffs because it's not accessible the, the fan is kind of in the way but that's fine because you have all the other ones attached and screwed in uh, to the standoff so the motherboard is not going to go anywhere it's not going to go uh, it's not going to move so don't worry about that and work your way around so uh, attach everything uh, back the way it was the front buttons the led the ssds rod them around the brackets uh, attach the uh, graphics card put the power on the graphics card don't forget anything uh, when you're doing everything backwards and putting it back together and uh, starting it up uh, first thing extremely impressed with how quiet this uh, cooling solution is extremely quiet the fan is spinning uh, around 800 to 11 1200 rpms you're never gonna hear it even at the highest uh, temperatures uh, the highest peak of your CPU and most of all the biggest improvement 13 to 14 degrees celsius drop on temperature this is very very impressive compared to the stock solution so from 80 degrees celsius we drop down to 66 67 maximum 68 degrees uh, while gaming heavy gaming uh, which overall led to lower temperatures on the graphics card and boost of the graphics card between uh, 20 and 40 megahertz more so I'm extremely pleased and extremely surprised how well this uh, cooling solution is uh, performing and overall is bringing our temperature in the, in the box a lot a lot better and of course uh, yeah would I recommend it absolutely uh, this is probably the easiest and the best uh, cooling solution to install um, yeah there are several other companies Noctua uh, be quiet uh, some other um, less known companies as well that provide similar lower profile uh, fans and lower profile uh, heat sinks for ITX cases and cases like this but this this one price to performance in my mind is the best uh, considering you know it's only 45 46 dollars uh, 78 millimeters height and you definitely have enough space to even upgrade if you want to that stock fan is 50 millimeters to the regular 25 millimeters if you want to there's space for that uh, personally I'm not gonna upgrade it until this fan completely fails because it's good enough in my mind uh, quiet enough and at the same time efficient enough I'm okay with temperatures on the CPU below 70 degrees um, no matter what um, that this is absolutely great considering the stock temperatures were 80 and HP obviously are believing in their cooling solution so 80 should be fine as well but you know why not get it lower right so yeah i think uh, the site uh big sure can 3 is a great solution for the hp pavilion uh, gaming desktop i highly recommend it uh, hopefully you guys can follow some of my instructions and upgrade it yourself as well the most important thing is to be patient have the proper plastic or wooden tools to work around and obviously to have some of those uh, old or unused socket back plates from from a different motherboard so remember you gotta you gotta have one of those otherwise your socket's not gonna stay in place uh, you definitely need an older board broken board anything you're not using that it's intel and you can put it in place instead of the stock uh, one that hp are using unless you really want to modify that plate uh, with a dremel tool and spend all the time which I think it's going to be a lot lot harder and it's going to take a long time not that it's not possible it is possible but it's just going to take a long time um, and again of course is the testing as you can see temperatures 13 to 14 degrees lower uh, side by side compared to the stock cooling solution we from before uh, same everything same uh, graphics card same memory but you can see the temperature of the CPU is a lot 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 lower 
Uh, I'm very, very comfortable with this temperature and I absolutely love it. Now, what is going to be the next modification? Just a quick hint for you guys. I am planning to install an intake fan uh, on the side of that retention black uh, bracket that is uh, dedicated for SSDs and hard drives inside. Uh, that way the fan is going to be right where the perforations of the outside um, of the case is so we will be able to intake some air and put it back in you know uh, do you really have to do this modification no in my mind not but uh, i personally want to see how many more degrees we can drop if we install another 90 millimeter uh, fan that will be intake uh, and that way it's going to work with conjunction with the 90 millimeter fan that is exhaust on the back. So hopefully that's going to create some good draft and we're going to see some temperatures dropping down another five to six degrees, hopefully. But that's what will require a little bit of longer modification, a little bit of more work with the Dremel tool, uh, which uh, I'm hopefully I'm going to film and show it to you guys. So you will see if you want to do this kind of modification as well. After that, I'm, I think I'm pretty much done with this one. I'm just uh, going to move to the next uh, pre-built desktop to show you guys. Quick hint, this is going to be a uh, Lenovo pre-built gaming computer. So those of you that have one of those, stay tuned. You're going to see a lot of modifications, a lot of different uh, new things added to it as well. So we look into a site, Big Shuriken 3, uh, the installation and how it actually performs compared to the stock solution with uh, uh, the HP uh, Pavilion gaming desktop the Walmart special you guys uh, know I like to work around with in conclusion excellent excellent uh, heatsink and fan I absolutely love it delivers a great uh, performance 13 14 degrees Celsius drop on the CPU much quieter a lot better than what uh, the stock solution from HP uh, has delivered a little bit harder to install because of uh, how proprietary the backplate of HP for the socket and retention is uh, not a huge fan of that uh, I've seen other companies Lenovo uh, Dell they're not using this kind of solution uh, and it's much easier to work with uh, I don't know what uh, prompt uh, HP to actually use this kind of a, a proprietary solution but there's a workaround around like I said find a broken motherboard or, or one that you don't need anymore and use that uh, socket uh, retention backplate so you can uh, install that instead. That's pretty much it guys. I apologize uh, for the technical difficulties. Uh, I couldn't really show you how, uh, the whole installation process, but uh, uh, something <laughs> went wrong with the camera. So I was filming, thinking that I'm filming and talking, but instead I, I did not, unfortunately. But I'm gonna leave a very detailed written description uh, below uh, in the video. So you can read and kind of follow it uh, step by step uh, if you want to do this kind of upgrade. That's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Subscribe if you're new. Stay tuned to the channel for more videos like this. And until next time, guys, you have a wonderful day.